one of the most important resources in a Turnum is Azoth. It is the catalyst, the theoretical source of magic that breathes infinite life into all living things that reside on Eternum. There are many things still to learn about the true power that is Azoth and what it has to offer. But what we do know is that Azoth may be the one reason that anyone who has escaped Eternum's powerful grasp attempts a return. My name is Danotage, and today I am going to show you the real meaning of cooking with Azoth go through the perks and the Azoth injections you'll need for your tools and some other gear to be the master crafter you wish to be. Alright, where do we get started? As you may know, Azoth can be added in increments of 15 to any of your tool or weapon or armor crafts. There are 5 increments of 15, not including the crafting with an item with 0 Azoth. That you can add from 15 to 75 and each level increasing the, its rarity chance now what exactly does that mean it does not mean that you are choosing the rarity of the item that you create it means that you are choosing how large the loot pools are for the higher rarities for example if you do not add any azoth into your crafting recipe you still have a chance to get the highest rarity that that item can reach but it's the lowest chance possible. The same goes for the rarities in between, its lowest rarity and its highest. It's pretty straightforward. The more Azoth you add, the better chance you get to receive a high rarity for that item. So in most circumstances, you will always want to add as much Azoth as you possibly can. But the fold for this me crafting mechanic is a little bit tricky, or at least a little bit Harder to see if you don't know what's going on just yet. The tier of the item also directly determines the maximum amount of Azoth that you can add to the craft, and is directly affected by how many perks the item can possibly have. Flint tools can only be common, iron tools can only be common or uncommon, and never rare, etc. This goes up as the material gets more rare. To be clear, all rarities in New World include Common, gray, with zero perks. Uncommon, green, with one perk. Rare, blue, with two. Epic, purple, with three. And legendary, which is orange, that have four perks. However, legendary items do not have random gear scores or perks as they are predetermined by the devs and are often named. So all the gear scores and, devs, er, and, and perks that they do have are already set. The rarities up to and not including legendaries have random perks and random gear scores. However, you can see the maximum and minimum that gear score can result in based on the visual element on the crafting recipe. You'll see that on your HUD. For example, and for those that have not played this game yet, it sounds complicated, but Amazon has made crafting in New World extremely friendly to anyone that wishes to give it a shot. So, now, you want to know which perks to look for. The general rule behind crafting tools and weapons and you have in your back pocket, and now, it's time to learn what is possible. What are the perks that are possible to drop on your crafts or stuff that you can see in the wild? In this video, we will only be talking about harvesting tools and some jewelry and some, some minor things because the moment we get into weapons and armor, the theory crafting of which perks you need or which ones are considered quote unquote good depend on your specific build and can get a little bit complicated. A little too complicated for this video. There will be more though. However, I will highlight some of the useful perks that you may want to keep your eye out for. Just in case you get an item that has one of these perks and you're feeling a little salvage happy. Starting with general perks that you can receive on any of the gathering tools, there are three that can show up on any of the tools, and they are generally all pretty good. Durable, giving you 25% more durability, which, unless you are selling everything you gain, you will be able to repair your tools pretty easily anyway with simple repair parts you get after breaking down anything you don't use. 
So if you want to use durable, it's not bad. Keeps you from having to repair often. However, it's probably the uh, least useful of the three. Alacrity or gathering alacrity, which you'll see again after all of these will have, well, can appear on any of the tools. Alacrity is um, what gives you a 50% haste boost after gathering from a single node. So you get a little bit faster. Your character does. This can help you if you have a route that you like and you want to hit all the nodes before anyone else shows up. You can do it pretty quick. Um, it's not ridiculous, but it makes you a little bit faster. So it's not bad. Or uh, the perk that I prefer most on any of my tools is Azoth Extraction, which gives you a 30% chance to gain a single Azoth after you finish gathering a node. It doesn't sound like much, but I promise they add up pretty quickly. Now, let's look at the individual tool perks, the ones that show up on after these general perks. Each of the tools will have almost literally the same perks that can appear on, on the tool. Um, the only difference is the name, really. Um, which skills they give, obviously, are about the same. Luck. Giving a 2% chance to finding rare items. Yield. Giving a 10% more, more resources in total. Or Discipline. Giving you 3% more XP for the relative gathering skill. Now, I, these are not what the perks are called. This is what they will end in. So you'll have something like logging luck or mining luck or harvesting luck, etc. But they all are essentially the same stat. So keep that in mind. Um, and if you see them, don't be confused. I think all three of these perks are rather useful, but it will always depend on what you're doing at any given time. Luck is good if you have a ton of storage already and you can store a bunch of really heavy rare items. Yield is great, but you'll need some nice bags in order to transport it back. However, it can also serve as a nice way to go out and do a quick run, get a bunch of materials in a lot less time, and get that for that craft you have already in mind. Discipline is good to stay ahead of the game. There'll be lots of zones later in the game where they have high level nodes that you may not be ready for. So having discipline on your early game tools or whatever what have you will keep your XP growing as fast as it possibly can so by the time that you get to the point where you're having very high level nodes you'll be able to harvest them and you can do that in expeditions when maybe the rest of your crew cannot etc okay now, for something a little bit more general, let's talk about the perks that will appear on your bags and your other jewelry that may or, not, may or may not work for your desired build, but will be something that you want to keep if you don't have something better. Also, they're very general, so if you have them, they won't hurt you. Uh, there's, a few, there's a few folds in this, but we'll get to that eventually as well. Everybody wears a bag, and everybody can wear jewelry. In fact, everyone should be wearing both of those. And you can have several versions of bags um, up to a certain level. Once you hit max level, I think you have three. Um, and then you unlock the uh, pieces of jewelry as you level your character. So these perks should be useful to everyone. First, let's talk about bags. There's a perk called Extra Pockets. It's always amazing. It just makes your bag bigger. You can't go wrong with that. You can carry more stuff. It's easy. Extra Pockets is a nice perk. If you're crafting bags, whether it's for yourself or for other people and you see Extra Pockets on there, hey, that will make you money if you want to sell it. That'll be good for anybody that wants to take it because you're going for something different or what have you. It's very good. Just It's plain out simple. It's just it becomes a bigger bag. Luck is in the same vein as just as useful as Extra Pockets. The only difference is instead of holding more, you're giving yourself more luck. Luck is extremely important when doing anything outside of combat in New World. It's kind of like the Force in Star Wars in a lot of ways. I know that that's uh, not what they're going for, but it, it kind of does work that way. Luck gives you another stat that allows for a higher chance of getting rare stuff. And if you have luck on your mining axe, and you or you have luck on maybe one or two out of your, of your tools out of, out of all of them, 
you are combining your luck with the, the luck that's on your bag. So you have an even higher chance for even more rare items. Not to mention that if you don't have luck on other tools, this will add a little bit of luck in total so that you don't have to worry about being with, you know, somewhat zero luck. Not to mention you'll, you'll still have a chance to roll these high level and high rarity items. It's just, you know, gives you a little boost. It's always good to have a little bit of boost. For those that value Azoth as much as I do, Attuned is extremely important. The perk is called Azoth Attuned. Because it gives you a static 3% gain in all Azoth collection. Now, I have yet to fully test this, but I do believe that it gives you plus when you're getting stuff from uh, quests. It gives you plus 3% when you're getting stuff from nodes. Um, it gives you 3% of essentially everything. Unless something is fully dictated to give you a specific amount, which usually it is, it is not. So, keep that in mind. If you like Azoth, if you need Azoth for many different reasons, Azoth Attuned is probably one of the best ways to do that and to get as much as you possibly can. It's great for Master Crafters and PvPers that need to travel or simply questing questers that are just trying to get every, everywhere at once. It is the life source of everything that is we we do as crafters or as players that want to do a bunch of other things it saves you time um it'll save you gold from transferring things from from territory to territory that maybe you own and if you don't own it well you have to use it anyway because you got to go get that stuff or you have to travel there to go use it at least so next we're going to talk about amulets Adored is adored harvesting, logging, etc. It's adored and the the harvesting name or the collecting name. Adored luck is the major name of the perk. Is never a perk to scoff at. As we just talked about, we're getting more luck. The perk explicitly talks about finding more rare items. That's pretty much what luck is, and that's what it's used for, as I've just explained. At least that's what it's mainly used for. I do believe that there are luck um there are luck-based pools for item drops and expeditions and item drops in other places and for the most part. But really what you're looking for is the rare item drops from fishing and cooking and mining and all that stuff. Luck is always good to have. So having that on your amulet, amulet is just as good as having it on your bag. And if you have it on both, well, that's a lot of luck for you. Pretty great. Next, we have calming that you can put on your amulet, amulets. There's calming one, two, three, and four. It's pretty key for anyone that's not a tank. Hate does the opposite for the tankier players, but calming is something that helps you take less threat. And especially for healers out there or very high damaging DPS, you're gonna get targeted a lot when you're in a group, even if you have a tank, because you gain a lot of, of aggro. So taking calming and um, putting that on your gear or having hate for on your play, on your tanker tanker players will make things a little bit less hectic for you. So keep that in mind and and utilize that as best as best you can. Next, fortified. Fortified is very powerful and also for everyone everyone has a chance to become fortified for the most part. Not every weapon gives fortify, but most of them have a chance to have that. So giving this or having this on you is pretty much always good. If you're soloing and you have no chance to have Fortify, that's a different sit situation, but like I've recommended before, always having a Life Staff on your back or having a Sword and Shield ready to go or pretty much anything that's a that makes you a little bit more survivable is always good. And it usually survivable weapons and gear come with a an ability to give you Fortify. So having Fortified, gives you Fortify that lasts 5% longer. Again, always good. Same goes for Fortified Recovery, which gives you a 30% Fortify for four seconds within a 90 second cooldown. So every 90 seconds is the only time this can trigger, or at least when it triggers after you can't trigger it for another 90 seconds. But you get four seconds of 30% Fortify. So that's once you're hit only below 50%. So if you're dominating and you're doing very well, you're, this won't trigger, but you won't need it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But if you get down below 50% of your health and you get hit, there's a 30% chance for this to trigger and you get fortified. That's pretty good. 
I'd say. It keeps you very survivable and uh, will put that in, put you in a good position. Uh, I'm sorry, it gives you 30% fortify, not 30% chance, uh, which is even better because it's more guaranteed. <laughs> so it, it'll work for you in the best of times or <laughs> in the worst of times. Again, it's great just because it makes you survival in every situation, but the same goes for the health perk. So the fortify is really nice. 30% is very strong, but if you want to have something that is just always good and always there for you, um, from 100% to 0%, you can take the health perk. The health perk is a 3% more maximum health. Never bad. Um, again, we're talking about all these perks because you can't choose the perks that you put on your gear and items, but you don't want to salvage them if you find items with these perks because, well, you can use them at least for a little bit until you get the stuff that you really want. Beloved. Beloved. Um, Beloved is included in the earrings pool, which is essentially the same thing as calming. It generates less threat. Always good. Despised is the opposite. So as we talked about calming and hate, Beloved and Despised are two different things. These go on to earrings. Earrings is a uh, another item that you get pretty late. Um, so making friends with a jeweler can help you very much in creating these, these items that you may need later. So look out for Beloved and Despised. Duplicating toast has become a lot more important in the latest changes to potions. If I was making this video maybe a month earlier, a few weeks earlier, um, this duplicating toast may have been, may have still been on my list, but not nearly as important. Right now, you're going to be drinking potions a lot more often as they have a much shorter time. So for those that missed the video where we talked about the changes from the closed beta to the open beta, one of the major changes is that almost every potion has lasted from 5 minutes and has been nerfed down to 30 seconds. So you'll be drinking them quite often. So, using duplicating toast, which gives you, uh, when you drink a potion, there's a 5% chance to not consume it. And so you can turn your, maybe you have a stack of 20 potions, you can turn that into, well, infinite if you get really lucky. Or, and I, I don't know how much, I, I think it's a direct 5%, I don't, don't, don't get me wrong, I don't think luck has anything to do with this part. Um, but you have 20 potions, you can turn it into 25, or 30, or 40, depending on how lucky you get. It's just more, which is always good. And you can suck them down and go, go about your day without worrying about running out of potions, because you have a little bit of an extra chance. Keep in mind, it's 5%, so you can suck down 20 potions and not get a single one back. So, you know, it happened. It will probably happen to me many times. It can literally save you in the in the nick of time if it goes strangely wrong for you. Um, but keep that in mind. It's a very nice perk. Finally, I'd like to highlight some of the perks for rings. There's not one ring to rule them all. There are many rings, and uh, they're all rather nice. Um, and just before finishing this list of the highlighted perks, remember that... There are many other perks that are also used. There's a lot of perks in this game. It's very nice. It's very interesting to, to theorycraft a lot of things. But these are just the perks that I think will work for everyone, no matter who you are. Obviously, there's a there's a small change with the um, or small difference with the threat changes from tankier tankier builds to non tankier builds. But that's pretty binary, for the most part. And so if you are a tank, you take the generate more threat. If you're not a tank, you do the opposite. You can also, if you're soloing as a tank, maybe you don't want threat. Maybe because there might be somebody else that comes along that might be able to save you in the public, which is very possible in this game. Um, if you're running around, as long as you hit a target, you get credit for it for the most part, except for some of the named bosses. So if somebody wants to help you out and tank, take uh, aggro off of you, maybe you don't want any threat. So you use some of the ones that, some of the items and perks that don't have threat or take third threat away. So, um, let's talk about rings. We have the hearty perk. Hearty. Like a nice Thanksgiving dinner. Or Christmas ham. Which grants you 5% more stamina. And even for magic users, stamina is always in play. You're gonna be dodging, you're gonna be moving, you're gonna be doing all kinds of stuff. Stamina is something you still want. Even if you're mainly using, you know, mana or what have you. Keen awareness. 
is a perk that grants you a plus 3% critical chance. Crit is not something that you necessarily need, um, especially if your crit is relatively low, but in my opinion, any critical chance is a good chance. So having a plus three at all from zero to three or three to 10, whatever it might be, um, it's always good. Luck is also available on rings. Luck is the, the, the perk is called luck, which is, I mean, it's straight up good. If you have luck on all your items, you're going to be getting a lot of rare things, which can take you very far, um, especially going after. So not only had hitting nodes, but going after like supply bins or um, provisioning chests, like maybe you'll get something that you may not normally get. Um, sugar, which is found, I believe, in Windsward in the provisioning chests is an uncommon drop. So you're not gonna get it every time. If you raise your luck, you may have a better chance at getting that, which sugar is very powerful in cooking. So taking luck and having luck gear on while going and collecting these things is almost required. Obviously, you don't need to do it, but it would help a ton if you did. So keep that in mind. And finally, we have refreshing, which is a great perk that allows max cooldowns to be lowered by 1%. Now, for the most part, that's not going to be a huge deal. However, if you're questing and you're going from battle to battle to battle to battle to battle, you may want that. Um, it's also kind of annoying when you're sitting there and you want to change out your gear because you want to try something different. You have to wait for your cooldowns to go down. So lowering it by 1% is not huge, but it is enough to make a difference, especially when you're in a long fight and you need to get that extra piece of DPS to inch out your foe in the you know, closest of situations. So you will have a higher DPS than anybody that's evenly matched with you without the refreshing perk. So refreshing is something to keep your eye out on. Perks is a topic on what I would call thick topic. But I hope that I was able to give you a basic rundown on how to get started when thinking about perks. Remember that perks talked about in this video are ones that you want to keep in your head when playing. So you don't have to constantly be staring at a spreadsheet just to see if you want to keep something or not. My goal here is to drill some of this knowledge into your head so that when you're generally leveling or just playing the game, you can just hear my voice in the background speaking to your head even when I'm not there. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to join the New World giveaway, link in the description. And please like the video to support the channel. With that, I leave you to ponder a tournament. And until next time, I've been Danotage, and I'll see you in the new world.